I promise in August, if you are not attending ROC, you're going to experience incredible fun. If you care about reinforcement learning, then this is the place to be this summer. Hi everyone, Charles here for MLU Papers. One big event is going to happen in the machine learning community this summer. The first edition of the Reinforcement Learning Conference, RLC. Now, what is that new conference? How is it different from the existing ones? When and where does it take place? Should you go there? And is it going to be a top tier conference? To answer all those questions and even more, we have the immense honor to receive on this channel some of the chairs of a program who will tell us all we need to know about RLC. In today's video, I will first tell you all about the organization of RLC. Then RLC General Chair Eugene Vinitsky will explain to us the specificities of this conference. Next, I will give you my take on whether or not RLC will be a top tier conference. And we will have a final word from Diversity and Inclusion Chair Pablo Castro. But before we get into the core of the topic, if you are interested in machine learning in general, and that includes reinforcement learning, this YouTube channel might just be the perfect place for you. There are interviews of famous researchers, like that one up there, where RL researcher Amy Zhang shares with us her research tips and insights into reinforcement learning. I also explain recent research papers in only 10 minutes, like that one on offline RL. All the links will be in the, des the description box down below. I also have non-RL content, including papers and interviews, but also vlogs, research tips, or more. If you're interested, make sure to give this video a thumbs up, subscribe to this channel, and hit the bell icon to get notified of the next videos. That's completely free for you, and that really helps the channel. Thank you so much. Let's jump in. What is RLC? As its name suggests, RLC focuses on reinforcement learning, or RL. RL is a very broad field which is both mathematically well-grounded and blooming with groundbreaking applications, from autonomous driving to the pre-training of ChatGPT to only name a few. And therefore, its community includes theoretical and applied researchers from academia and the industry. Surprisingly enough though, until last year, the RL community has had no place to meet and publish their works other than the overcrowded mainstream conferences, like NeurIPS or ICML. Now, I have nothing against NeurIPS or ICML, I think they are great, but there is some real demand here. If you are a young researcher starting in RL, you may want to have your own venue where you can publish your papers and meet other RL enthusiasts. Well, now there's one, RLC. Concretely, RLC will take place this summer from August the 9th to August the 12th. On the first day, August the 9th, there are going to be workshops on various RL topics. And honestly, those workshops look very enticing. From the failure modes of RL to the cooperation in multi-agent RL, you will have a hard time choosing which one to attend. Pro tip here, I know some people skip the workshops, but the ones at RLC are all of very high quality. Speakers include famous researchers who will inspire you, industry professionals with whom to connect, and highly motivated PhD students eager to collaborate with you. So don't miss out. Then from August the 10th to the 12th, you will see the state of the art RL published at RLC, because RLC has its own research papers, which have undergone RLC's special review process. And there are some really good papers in there. You will also see keynote presentations made by some of the most famous RL researchers in the world. Like no joke, there are so many stars in RLC schedule that it's fair to call it a constellation. But alright, I talk too much. Time to hear one of those who actually made it possible. Just for you on ML New Papers, we have the immense honor to receive Eugene Vinitsky, who is not only a great researcher, but also a general chair of the RLC conference. So good afternoon, Eugene. For those who don't know you, could you please introduce yourself? Hi, so uh, I'm, I'm Eugene Vinitsky. I'm a new faculty at NYU, studying kind of the intersection of RL, multi-agent systems, and transportation systems and autonomy. I got my PhD from UC Berkeley with Alexander Bayan and spent some time as a postdoc at, at Apple. I'm also one of the general chairs of RLC this year. So first, what is RLC? To our knowledge, RLC is the first RL-focused archival conference. The goal is to bring together RL practitioners, theorists, folks with an interest into one place, give them a chance to present their work, network, meet folks with shared interests, things like that. RLC is going to take place this summer from August the 9th to the 12th. What will be the program? So the first day is going to be workshops. We have a, a wild number of uh, super exciting workshops that I 
don't think could have happened anywhere else or, or unlikely to happen anywhere else. And then we have three days of keynotes, orals, poster presentations, you know, the standard thing. I'm super excited about all the keynotes we have. So what makes RLC different from all the other conferences? Outside of the obvious, right, being topic focused. Uh, the, the program chairs did a ton of work to create a specific, slightly different review process for this conference that's a little specific to RL. So we have particular technical standards that we're trying to impose on papers. And maybe because of the scale of this year's RLC, put a lot more effort into review than I think is normally done. Every paper had kind of more involvement from a very senior RL researcher than I think they would normally get at another conference. Besides, and this is also true for RLDM and other RL conferences, it's a real joy to be surrounded by that many researchers in their field and how it's you know something that they haven't necessarily experienced before during their PhDs and postdocs and so on. So that's going to create a very favorable environment for networking and collaborating? Yeah, no, absolutely. Um, um, I, I had the good fortune of attending the previous RLDM and the set of folks I knew to talk to and collaborate with, like suddenly like blossomed. And that's kind of what we're hoping to get for junior researchers at RLC as well. Could you tell us more about the connections between RLC and the industry? We have a fair number of sponsors. The sponsor list isn't complete, but right now we're, we're being sponsored by Sony, Amazon, uh, Google DeepMind, Google Research, uh, Boston Dynamics, and Electric Sheep Robotics. You know, those are all major players in this space and folks who are extremely excited about RL and, and are excited to meet the folks who are attending as well. So we have a couple like talent programs around trying to get folks who, who want this to be connected with those companies. And, you know, that sponsor list may grow as we, as we approach the conference. So that's going to be a great opportunity for a master or PhD student who is looking for an internship at one of those companies, right? I imagine so. I... Uh, I would hope that that's part of why they're attending. But, you know, those folks will be there. They'll be attending, uh, you know, a very significant fraction of our attendees are from industry. So I would expect that some collaborations will blossom out of, out of those interactions. Particularly if you look at who the workshops are organized by, there's a lot of industry involvement. Who should go to RLC? Anyone who's RL curious, working in RL, uh, you know, PhD students, undergrads. Postdocs, you know, any, anybody working in the field, it's, it's going to be a great time. There are many students and university professors who follow and support this channel. Yeah. So I would like to ask you, what are the benefits of attending RLC for a student? That's a, that's a good question. So obviously, if you're an author of a paper, you should go. If you're an undergrad or a master's student and you are interested in doing an RL PhD, having had a very impactful conversation with a senior researcher is like a lot of the ways that PhDs are often sparked. Um, I think this happens pretty often. Um, you know, one of my PhD students is somebody I met at, at NeurIPS, undergrads, masters, there's that aspect. But, you know, there's also becoming part of a community, feeling part of a community and having somebody to talk to about your research ideas, you know, having someone to bounce those ideas off of, having people to collaborate with. You know, these are the things that make research really joyful sometimes and that prevent you from being isolated. You're not going to have many better opportunities to interact with so many folks in your field. The keynotes are going to be crazy. The, the workshops are amazing. Uh, I am personally overwhelmingly excited. Like it's just going to be four days of all the things I would possibly want to hear about. I think that you said something extremely important. Being part of a research community goes way beyond one's lab. There are people working in similar topics or areas all around the globe with whom to connect and collaborate. And if you are working in reinforcement learning, then RLC is definitely one of the best places for that. Yeah, I mean, I'm not going to argue with that. I mean, to me, research has never been a solo effort. Even if you're writing papers mostly on your own, they are through communicating, talking to other folks, uh, getting their feedback. All that is just, it's such an important part of research. I made an interview on this channel with Amy Jung. Um, I watched that in description. Interview. Yeah. Great. I'm glad to hear that Eugene is following this channel too. So Amy said something very similar. While research is often perceived as solitary, in reality, it is a very social activity. Yeah, it's kind of one of those persistent myths that I wish would go away. I mean, it certainly is a solo activity for some people, but, but not the majority of people. Yeah, I think it's overall a, a pretty harmful myth. If you didn't believe that myth, the minute research turned into a solo activity, you would think, oh, something is wrong. I should, I should do something to address this instead of assuming that that's the norm. Is there something you would like to add? You know, one thing I just want to say is how much work the community put into this in so many different ways. You know, during the review process, the program chairs, uh, the senior chairs, technical reviewers, senior reviewers, 
just put in way more time and effort to every paper than I have seen. When a paper received a bad review, we would oftentimes pay mo more attention to the other reviews to make sure to, to offset the fact that it had a bad review or we would recruit a new reviewer. There was just so much going on. Besides the program chairs, the award chairs, the equity chairs, sponsorship chairs, and we're going to free the comms chairs. I'm going to drop one of the chairs, and then I'm going to feel really bad. Just like put in so much work. And I hope the community appreciates that. I'm sure the community does appreciate that. Final question. You have 30 seconds to convince our viewers to come to RLC. What do you say? I promise in August, if you are not attending RLC, you're going to experience incredible FOMO as people come back and are like, that was the best conference I, I've been to. That was the most fun I've had. The most interesting talks I've attended. I, I'm really confident that if you're an RL researcher, you are going to be delighted that you attended. Thank you so much for your interview today. Thank you for the support of RLC. RLC, top tier or flop tier? Now, the burning hot question is, is RLC going to be a top tier conference? Yes, I am positive about it. The keynote speakers and the chairs are a dream team. The newly accepted papers are very good thanks to triumphant review process, which even got a pass on the various social media platforms. And if that weren't enough, it further has strong ties to the industry with sponsors like Amazon or Google DeepMind. And that means internship or full-time opportunities waiting for us around the corner. The organization team has put a huge effort to make that conference a success. We heard it with Eugene Vinitsky today, they are really involved and passionate. To make this video, I had the chance to speak to some of them and they really helped a lot to make the process smooth and pleasant. Big thumbs up to all of you, you are really amazing. Next month, from August the 9th to August the 12th, is going to be the first edition of RLC. Most of the big names in RL will be there. Are you going to be there too? Please let me know in the comment section down below. Also, if you enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up, subscribe, hit the bell icon, I would really appreciate that. Also, don't forget to check out my other videos for technical or non-technical content. Thanks again so much for watching. I wish you a wonderful week and I'll see you in the next video. But before that, I leave the final words of this video to an amazing RL researcher who is also RLC's diversity and inclusion chair, Pablo Castro. Cheers. Hello everyone, my name is Pablo Samuel Castro. I'm the DEI chair for Reinforcement Learning Conference or RLC, which is happening this August in Amherst, Massachusetts. I really hope you're able to come. If you care about reinforcement learning, then this is the place to be this summer. It's going to bring together experts, practitioners, researchers, and just enth general enthusiasts of, uh, about reinforcement learning. And it's going to be a wonderful opportunity to make new friends, meet old ones, and just talk about uh, research and reinforcement learning in general. Um, I hope that you're able to come. We, we're really trying to make it as diverse and inclusive as possible. Um, it's our first time doing this and we're putting a lot of work into it. So we really hope you can make it. And I hope to see many of you there.